Korea, a crowded little finger of land, but of key importance to the free world in the Far East. What happened here opened the next major chapter in the history of the United States Army. General Secretary Gorbachev, if you seek peace, if you seek prosperity for the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, if you seek liberalization, come here to this gate. Mr. Gorbachev, open this gate. <laughs> Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. This is the tale of the Cold War. This is a tale of two nations divided. This is a tale that has affected the lives of Germans, that affects the lives of all Koreans today. This is a tale of two Koreas and one Germany. This is a tale of unification. Why is unification important to South Koreans and North Koreans? North Korean belligerence and rising tensions may lead to attacks on the Korean Peninsula, therefore jeopardizing the lives of thousands of citizens and paving way for a war to ensue. According to Peter M. Beck of the Wall Street Journal, there are three plausible scenarios for reunification. One, a sudden and bloodless merging, as happened in Germany. Two, a violent conflict as seen in Vietnam. Three, a mixture of German and Vietnamese situations, as seen in the chaotic post-communist transitions of Romania and Albania. As we hope for a bloodless unification between the North and the South, we turn to the example of Germany to see what we can do. How can we learn from the example of Germany to reconcile the division of the Korean Peninsula? Let's take a look at its background. First, the German timeline. After Germany's unconditional surrender, the Allies meet at the Potsdam Conference and choose to divide Germany into four military occupation zones with France in the southwest, Britain in the northwest, and the United States in the south, and the Soviet Union in the east. The British, French, and American sectors are combined to form West Germany, the Federal Republic of Germany. Stalin establishes a communist state in the Soviet zone, forming East Germany, or the German Democratic Republic. Europe is divided between the communist and capitalist powers, divided by what Churchill calls the Iron Curtain. The line crosses division between the East Germany and the West Germany. Later on, however, the communist regime in East Germany begins to falter. Then comes Die Wendt, a turning point in German history where the communist government in East Germany gives way and West Germany's parliamentary democracy takes place. It begins in the fall of 1989, with a peaceful revolution, a series of massive demonstrations against the East German government. By November 9th, the Berlin Wall falls and democratic elections are held by the March of 1990. Divisions are breached and the country is reunified. It's incredible for me, it's, uh, I can't uh, describe really the, my feelings, it's uh, something unreal for me. If, if there is someone who, uh, who sleeps for eight weeks and you told him what happened here, he thinks you're crazy. It's, it's unthinkable. Your government seems to be changing every day. Where do you think it's going? <laughs> That's the government's problem, he says, not mine. Such an astonishing moment in history. He now turns to the present to see what others have to say. We turn towards the Korean Institute for National Unification, or the KINU, and other sources to see what we can learn from Germany and what we have to gain or lose through unification. First, we have to see the benefits of German and Korean reunification. The first aspect of this is peace and stability. When Germany reunified, it had a sense of stability as there was no enemy to the east or the west. Like this, South Korea will be more stable, having less to worry on when a war may start. Also, in the long run, Korea will be able to reduce its spending in the military and therefore being able to concentrate more of its GDP in the actual development of the nation. The second aspect is a national identity and the preservation of culture. The country's peoples are able to recover homogeneity and maximize national potential as a division no longer divides their minds. Citizens will come to notice that they were once a unified Korea. The third aspect is a considerably stronger workforce. Unemployed teachers may be able to find jobs teaching thousands of un uneducated students in the less developed Korea and skilled workers from the north may create a second wave of outburst in gross domestic product. Some, perhaps tens of thousands of such workers might come south, filling empty South Korean factories and producing a second wave of South Korean export growth. South Korean industrial conglomerates would be likely to add North Korean factories to their business lines. One can easily imagine, for example, a combination of POSCO steel concern with a huge Kim Chae-ik steel factory in Chongjin, 
and the productive employment of hundreds of thousands of North Korean workers. The fourth, fourth aspect is the political power gained by the reunification of Korea. The utilization of more territory on a land bridge to the Asian continent will likely increase trade and trust between the many Asian countries able for access to the North Korean land bridge, assisting South Korea in its international growth. While reunification holds a lot of promise, there are severe economic and cultural difficulties that also must be considered. First, there are cultural differences. There are walls in people's heads. When Germany reunified, there were stereotypes of the Western and Eastern Germans, the Western stereotype of Besser Oasis, the Westerners who know better, and the Jammer Oasis, or the complaining Easterners, emerged. Four decades of communism had a huge cultural impact which proved difficult to adapt to capitalism. Officially, neither unemployment nor private property existed in East Germany prior to 1990. Many struggled to adapt to the capitalist system despite Germany's generous social welfare system. A solution to this, however, would be a better education and awareness to help ease the impact, as well as the factors who can help other North Koreans adjust. The second difficulty would be the severe migration of talent, which would lead to social problems. After East Germans migrated to the West after the wall fell, many of those who left were the young and the talented people who were needed most to rebuild and populate its economy. Many who left to work or study were also female. The hordes of unemployed loveless young men left behind have caused social problems like a low birth rate and right-wing extremism. A solution to this problem in the South Korean crisis will be bringing wealth to North Korea, giving the talented people work so they do not leave, and basically employing them as laborers or education to work in their own industries, sell land, and equipment to better themselves in the new society. The third and most largest reason why reunification would be difficult would be the financial difficulties. One of the most obvious reasons why most South Korean citizens don't want unification is because of the high economic cost, with tr tr trillions of dollars being necessary to fix the e income discrepancies between the South Koreans and the North Koreans. First, the infrastructure in the North Korean land would have to be built, projected to be $10 billion. Also, in Germany, it took approximately 1.2 to 1.5 trillion euros over 20 years to equalize the East and West German economies, and even so nowadays, the region bound by West Germany has a stronger economy than what was formerly East Germany. The West also continues to send the East 100 billion euros annually. For all these financial problems, we must seek countries that can help. First, China. China can give Pyongyang 3 billion dollars a year. Japan could also repay 10 billion dollars in reparations for having colonized the peninsula. The World Bank in the United States may see the benefits of building a modern economy in North Korea as such changes would bring peace and prosperity to North Asia. This alone may motivate them to help. The solution to this problem would be to start saving money for future purposes. It's not just saving, but more of investing. Aid from foreign countries, China, Japan, and the UN may ease the transition between North Korea and South Korea unifying. Although Korean unification poses multiple difficulties, including trillions of dollars in the economic sector, it is clear that integrating North Korea and South Korea back together into one nation is both the moral and economically most effective option. As Germany shows that unification is difficult in the short term but beneficial in the long term, Koreans should form the mindset of looking to the future. We should begin our preparations immediately and spread out the funds necessary so that Korean taxpayers won't be overburdened once the time comes. Current tensions between North Korea and South Korea show that divided, they are bound to have chronic problems. Before a crisis like a nuclear war, before it is too late to turn back and reunite, before they become completely separate, they must reunite and move on together like how Germany unified and advanced forward. After all, who can forget the moving images of rapturous Berliners streaming across the wall, tearfully embracing their friends and family? The solidarity tax might have been unpopular at its inception, but few voices are raised against it now. German reunification is widely seen as the right thing to have done. In spite of everything, we must remember, united we stand, divided.